Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our first Tech Tuesday for 2024. I've had a good break, so thank you. I, I was ready last week. Um, Charlie decided to hijack my spot, but I'm glad everybody's here. We're kicking off the year. It's very hard to believe that we're already midway through January, as I said on Saturday. It's a very scary thought that, but we are flying at the moment, which is great. And we are kicking off this week. What is the thing that pretty much everybody puts on their New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the year? If, if you look at it carefully, you'll see that most people see, say, we're going to lose weight. And then because they haven't lost 15 kilos in the first two days of the month, and they've carried on with their December diet, they get all upset and say, I can't lose weight because I've got a very slow metabolism. And that is going to be the subject of my talk tonight and over the next couple of weeks, namely your metabolism. I always thought I was able to stay skinny because I've got a fast metabolism. I can have a nice big meal and about four or five hours later, I break out in a sweat and I know that my meal has just burnt off. I'm unfortunate from that perspective, and I possibly do have a, a fast metabolism, but as I discovered when I was doing my research, that's not always the reason. So what is this funny thing called a metabolism? We know the word, we've spoken about it before, and we often talk about it to other people, but what is actually your metabolism? just lose all my other bits and pieces over here. Oops. Okay. So I've titled this New Year, New You, and how to kickstart your metabolism in order to lose that weight that you're looking to lose. So as I said, what is metabolism? Think of metabolism as your body's way of turning food and drinks into the fuel it needs. Because if you really think about it, we sit down and have a nice meal. I've just finished a nice um, supper of semi-roasted chicken and veggies and rice. And that all goes in over here. What happens then? How does it get to our cells? How does it feed us? How does it, how does it work? So metabolism is that little system that converts your food and drinks into fuel. A little bit like when you put, your, when you put petrol in your car. How does putting petrol in the tank at the back of the car get your engine to work? Through a whole big system, which I'm really not qualified to talk on because I know absolutely nothing about it, the fuel gets converted to energy, which turns your engine over and gets your car to go. And metabolism does very much the same thing. It's like a chemistry party where calories and oxygen team up to create the energy that keeps your body rocking and rolling. I, I did borrow this talk from a newsletter written by the Cleveland Clinic. So this is not my wording. This is their wording, although I have changed the wording a little bit so that we don't have any copyright issues over here. So this energy is the secret source that powers all your body functions. You know that secret recipe that grandma used to make? They tell you everything and then there's that little ingredient that they forget to mention. That's the secret to making it taste exactly like grandma used to make. Uh, excuse me for one second. I'm just going to pause this. Um, hello. Share my screen again. Okay. 
Right. So as I said, talking about the, the secret source that gets your body working the way it should be working. So what does your metabolism actually do? Your metabolism never stops, even when your body is at rest. So even while you're sleeping, your metabolism is still working. And that is how I know, because I'll often, I'll, I had a big meal now tonight for supper because it's when we normally have our, our main meal of the day because our family is together. And probably around about three o'clock tomorrow morning, I'll wake up in a sweat knowing that there goes my supper because it's just burnt off of me. Now, it constantly provides energy for basic body functions. Every part of your body needs fuel. Think what would happen if your brain shut down, you would die. Think what, you, what would happen if your heart suddenly stopped, you would die. You, know, you can go to sleep, you can go into a coma and your eyes will be closed and you might not hear everything clearly, but all the rest are working. So your breathing has to work, your heart has to beat, your brain has to tell all these things to work. And every so often the muscles twitch as well. So that is all those things. So your, your metabolism provides energy for things like breathing, circulating the blood. Imagine what happens if your blood stops moving. Well, I know what happens if your blood stops moving because that's what keeps me in business. Digesting food. Growing and repairing cells, because we know that as we sleep, that's when the healing actually happens in your body. Managing hormone levels. Regulating body temperature. Because what would happen if metabolism shuts down and we overheat in the middle of the night? Or what would happen if the metabolism shuts down and we suddenly become freezing cold at the moment when it's 25 degrees outside at night. Um, I think people would quite enjoy that, but you've got to regulate the body temperature because you don't want to get too hot. You don't want to get too cold. So we have a thing called a BMR or a basal metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate is like the energy your body needs to keep the lights on when you're chilling out. So uh, if you've ever watched a movie from the States where you see these big truck stops, or if you've ever been through a truck stop here in South Africa, I don't think it's quite as much in this country, but I remember when we were in the States uh, a good few years ago, traveling through, it's a little chilly in certain parts of the area. And what happens is these guys pull into the truck stop, but because when I'm talking a little chilly, it's a little bit like they're going through at the moment where temperatures are hitting minus 40 degrees Celsius and lower. And if you want to get an idea of what that's like, stick your head in your freezer and that's about minus five. Now, the temperatures are experiencing over there is eight times colder than that. So what these guys do is they pull the trucks in to the truck stops and they've got to rest and they want to sleep. But those trucks run. They never, ever turn them off. Because if they turn them off, they can't turn them back on again because everything freezes. And so the engine is ticking over. The truck isn't moving. And that's a bit like what our BMR does. And it's the, while you're sleeping, while you are not conscious, your blood's circulating, you're breathing, your heart's ticking over, your brain is actually working, but you're relaxed. And it's different for everyone. And it's as unique as your fingerprints. As we know, no two people, as far as they can tell, on this planet, out of the, I don't know how many billion people there are, have two fingerprints that are the same. That is how unique your BMR is. So my basal me metabolic rate is different to your basal metabolic rate. 
and vice versa. Your BMR covers about 60 to 70% of the energy your body uses. Crash diets and super low calorie plans can hit the brakes on your BMR, which explains why weight loss isn't always a smooth ride and it can get a little bit bumpy. So these crash diets um, or what they call yo-yo diets. So you, you starve yourself for a couple of weeks and miraculously you lose your weight. But the second that you've hit your goal weight, you go back to the same lifestyle you had before. It doesn't work because now you're going to pick up that weight probably twice as fast as you lost it and have interest added to it. So the, the, the super so, sort of starvation diets, the eating a one stick of celery a day diet, those things can play havoc with your BMR. So my suggestion is don't do that. Get on a good, healthy, balanced diet. If necessary, consult with a medical specialist like a dietitian or a clinical nutritionist, someone who is trained to help you figure out your BMR and to help you with a calorie controlled diet. Remember, diet is what you eat. Nutrition is what your body absorbs. And what you want to do is you want to get the optimum nutrition to allow your body to hit its optimum BMR so that you can get to your optimum weight and energy level. Your body uses about one-tenth of its energy to process food into fuel. It's burning off quite a bit. The remaining energy fuels your physical movement. So if you are lying in bed all day, you're not going to burn off a lot of energy. If you're off running the Comrades Marathon, you require a lot more calories because you're burning off a lot more energy to run that race. So your athletes require a lot more calories to activate their BMR. Whereas your office worker who's exercising their fingers only and with no disrespect to office workers, but it's an ex extremely dangerous job in my opinion because, because they're not moving. And I know what it's like to sit in front of a computer for an hour or so at a time. I tend to, order drowse, to drop off to sleep because my body is so used to doing things and not sitting still that it doesn't know what to do. So you need to stay active because you need that energy. So how does metabolism actually affect your weight? And do you want or have a slow metabolism? Because if you have a slow metabolism, you need to, to drastically cut your calories. You need to add more intense cardio and you need to use more fat burners. Or you need to stop doing all of those things, should I say. You need to focus on resistance training, weightlifting. And we're not talking 120 kilos. We're talking one kilo, maybe two kilos at a time. You need to follow a high protein diet. And you need to slowly add more activity to bring it up. Many people blame metabolic problems for weight struggles. They're too fat, they're too thin, they're not happy. Everybody's different. But your metabolism naturally regulates itself to meet your body's needs. Sorry to disappoint you on that one. It's really the cause of weight gain or weight loss. In general, anyone who burns more calories than they take in will lose weight. So what goes in must get burnt off. Nature loves balance. So if you take in more calories and burn less, you're going to put on weight. If you're burning more calories and taking in less, you're going to lose weight. So you need to play around with that. Someone with a fast metabolism or fast BMR burns a lot of calories even while at rest. And I do believe that I have a fast metabolism. I think 
genetics plays a, long, a big role in it, but I don't know. If you have a slow metabolism or slow BMR, your body needs fewer calories to keep it going. And this is why when we talk diet, one size does not fit everyone. You've got to tailor make your diet and nutrition to your metabolism. A fast metabolism does not necessarily lead to thinness. In fact, studies show that people with overweight or obesity often have fast metabolisms. Their bodies need more energy to keep basic body functions going. So what conditions affect your metabolism? A few people have endocrine disorders that cause their metabolism to work slower. You may burn fewer calories and put on weight if you have the following some, um, conditions, namely a thing called Cushing's syndrome, which is a condition caused by too much cortisol in the body. If you've ever met somebody who, for whatever medical condition they've had, their doctor puts them on cortisone. Might be for a short term, might be for a long term. They get quite chubby. They don't put on a lot of weight, but they, they look as though they've put on a lot of weight. And their face becomes very chubby. They, they, they basically just balloon out. And that is what um, Cushing's does, because when you're on cortisone, it gives your body more cortisol, because cortisol, cortisone, same thing. And that's what Cushing's syndrome is, and it's an um, endocrine problem. It's linked to your thyroid. I won't get into that one just yet. Hypothyroidism, which is an underactive thyroid gland, might cause you to burn fewer calories. Metabolism can also cause other systemic health problems. Anyone who takes in more calories than they burn will gain weight. So if you want to know the secret to being the ideal weight, you need to burn more calories than you take in. That way you'll get to lose your weight. But this can lead to obesity and related problems like diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Because if they're taking in more calories than they burn, so in other words, you following the SAD diet or the standard American diet and you're shoving in a lot of junk food, which is extremely high in calories, but you're now sitting on your couch and the only thing that you're exercising is your thumb when you're changing um, channels on the, on the remote or scrolling through your cell phone, you are going to grow a little bit larger. So how do we speed up our metabolism? What ways can we use? And an article I found was eight easy ways to do this. Your metabolism is responsible for converting nutrients from the foods you eat into fuel. So this provides your body with the energy it needs to breathe, move, digest food, circulate blood, and repair damaged tissues and cells. The higher your metabolic rate, the more calories you burn at rest. Many factors can affect your metabolism, including your age, diet, body composition, sex, body size, physical activity, your health status, and any medications you're taking. So there's a lot of factors that involved over here. And this is why I always recommend that you see a trained, qualified health practitioner because they know what to look for. They need to order certain blood tests so that they can see what's happening. Because if you didn't know it, your blood can tell a huge amount of stories about what's happening in your body. There are several evidence-based strategies that can help increase your metabolism to support your weight management and overall health. Number one, eat plenty of protein at every meal. Eating food can temporarily increase your metabolism for a few hours. This is called the thermic effect of food or 
TEF. It's caused by the extra calories required to digest, absorb, and process the nutrients in your meal. Protein causes the largest rise in TEF, which is why a lot of people will tell you you need to have a high protein, low fat diet. Dietary protein requires 20 to 30 percent of its usable energy to be expended for metabolism, compared to 5 to 10 percent for carbs and 0 to 3 percent for fats. So you don't need a lot of uh, metabolism to burn the fat, but you do need a lot more to burn the protein. Eating more protein can also reduce the drop in metabolism often associated with losing fat. And this is because protein helps prevent muscle loss, which is a common side effect of dieting. The next thing that you need to do is a high intensity workout. If you do CrossFit or one of those things, you'll hear about a, a workout called HIT, which is a high impact, high intensity workout or training. It's a high, sorry, high intensity interval training it involves quick and very intense bursts of activity. So this is where your um, CrossFit comes in. If this type of exercise is safe for you, it can help indirectly speed up your metabolism. And we say that because, because it's high intensity, you shouldn't have any cardiac problems because otherwise you will stress a lot of people because you will drop dead from a heart attack. And you shouldn't have, um, uh, there's numerous other things that you need to be careful of. So if you've had a knee replacement recently, don't do a HIIT training. If you've had a hip replacement recently, don't do a HIIT training. Um, if you are prone to cardiac problems or you have a pacemaker, don't take part in this because you're going to have problems. If your blood pressure is a problem, I wouldn't recommend starting with this. You need to build up into this high-intensity training. Your muscle cells will, bur will burn energy at rest, which helps you burn fat and build muscle. So it's a little bit of a catch-22. You need to lose the weight, so you need to do this, but you also need to be very, very careful. So this effect is believed to be greater for HIT than for other types of exercise. But like anything, don't go from being a couch potato to being an energizer bunny. You're going to get into trouble. To get started, choose a modality such as biking or running that you're already familiar with. And again, when we talk about this, we're not talking high intensity cycling or high intensity running. You're not going to, again, go from couch potato to doing a marathon. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to build up slowly. The guys who run Comrades, Comrades happens in is it May or June. They started in pretty much the end of June or July last year to do their training. I know a couple of people who are training for Comrades, and they've already done a couple of marathons and a couple of half marathons. Um, the one lady I, I know did a half marathon on New Year's Day. Started off hot, ended up in pouring rain. But that's the sort of training levels that they do. They don't just wake up and go out and do a 42-kilometer run. Same with your hit training. Don't just start and get into it. You're going to hurt yourself. So you need to lift heavy things as well. Think of muscles as the powerhouses of your body. They burn more calories than fat even when you're relaxing. Building muscles not only makes you stronger, but revs up your metabolism, helping you torch more calories 24 seven. And no, you don't have to go out and lift this little weight that's in the picture. Start with one kilo, then push it up to one and a half, then go up to two, then to three, then to four. And so you get up until you can do this sort of weight. This takes a huge amount of training and conditioning.
when you're shedding weight, lifting weights is your buddy. It keeps your metabolism from taking a nosedive and helps you hold on to that hard-earned muscle. So just if you are grossly overweight and we're talking 200 kilos plus, standing up out of your chair isn't lifting weights, but it's a good start. Keep lifting and boosting that metabolism. Right, I know we are running out of time, so I think I'll just cover this one quickly. And the next thing is to stand up more. Remember I spoke about the office workers earlier who sadly tend to spend six to eight hours sitting. Sitting too much can have, can have negative effects on your health, partly because long periods of sitting burn fewer calories and can lead to weight gain. One 2018 review found that standing or stepping at work was associated with lowered cardiometabolic rate scores, weight, lower weight, body fat, waist circumference, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, fasting triglycerides, total HDL cholesterol, and insulin. Stepping rather than standing resulted in greater improvements to lower systolic blood pressure and insulin resistance. So just walking in place goes a long way to helping. If you have a desk job, Try standing up and walking for short periods to break up the length of time you spend sitting down. You can also try going for walks during the day or invest in a standing desk. Go one further, put a treadmill underneath it. In a 2020 study, researchers found that doing this resulted in reduced blood insulin and sugar. That's where I'm going to stop for now. Uh, we've got about five minutes left. Does anybody have any questions or comments before I stop the recording? <laughs>